Over the past half century, the suburban shopping mall has stripped away the vital retail business cores in city after city across America, leaving behind empty storefronts and urban despair. But today, the tide has turned. Sales at many malls have peaked. In some locations, malls have even closed due to lack of business. And in the inner city, cash registers are beginning to turn in receipts that are reverberating in America's corporate boardrooms. Whether it's the IKEA furniture store in Elizabeth, New Jersey, the most successful in North America, Costco in Brooklyn, which outperforms other Costco's in the New York region, or Sears in East Los Angeles, which is outperforming other Sears stores in Southern California, the message to business executives is simple. If they looked at the market and they wanted to capitalize on it, they would be very successful because you have a lot of customers that, even though they're in an inner city store, they have this, uh, disposable income and they're looking for good quality merchandise. And they, it, this is a gold mine. Sears used common business sense in its L.A. store, serving a mostly Hispanic market. They put up signs in Spanish, hired bilingual clerks from the community. They size goods to fit customer needs and help them establish credit. Distressed inner city communities account for $85 billion of annual retail demand. Professor Michael Porter of the Harvard Business School conducted a groundbreaking research project on the inner city. The findings? The inner city is an enormous business opportunity. We found that because of the density of population, uh, uh, this was a gigantic market, uh, accounting for uh, about 7% of total U.S. retail demand, and uh, yet not perceived as, a, as an attractive market by almost anybody. And because of that perception, wide swaths of urban America have been left to wither and die until recently. Here in the city of Boston, no one had built a new supermarket in more than 20 years until a developer came along and took a risk in the city's tough Roxbury district. We had a lot of reservations in the beginning and we had a lot of issues to overcome. Steve Samuels put a $60 million deal together luring major chain stores to a forlorn piece of property south of downtown Boston. It succeeded all of our expectations. Our grocery stores in the top five in their entire chain. The uh, Kmart's top five in the state. The massive project rings in sales of $100 million a year and created 1,500 jobs from the community. It's a good thing for the community because it caters to all ethnic backgrounds. It's close my house, uh -huh. so I think that everybody's happy too. There's been a tendency to think that these are poor areas, there's no market. These are areas where there's a lot of uh, uh, problems in doing business, therefore we can't make a profit. And what some of the pioneers are demonstrating is that that's not true. Pioneers like basketball superstar Magic Johnson, who teamed with Sony to create one of the most successful multiplexes in America. A million people pass through these doors every year. The success of this theater sends a positive message to all corporations to say, hey, come on in the community and uh, you're going to do well. And that kind of magic may translate into huge dollars in New York when Harlem, USA opens. It's an inner city mall that will have a Disney store, a multiplex, HMV record store, a Chase Bank, and a sports store. The project is anticipated to usher in a major renaissance in Harlem.